Thank you for being with me today and joining me. You and I today are going to have a wonderful heart-to-heart talk that I believe will really bless your life in a very special way. A few months ago, I was thinking, is true wealth the same as worldly riches? And I've been looking at the Word of God in a brand new way with brand new eyes. And I saw something I have never seen before that I really want to share with you, that I believe will set you on a new path to be blessed in a new way. So I pray the Lord today will really take the scales off. I pray the Lord will really speak to you in a really powerful, clear way about this truth. And dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. And Lord, I pray you will minister your truth in a mighty, simple way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go to 3 John, chapter 1. And let's read together a very familiar verse. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Now, we've read that verse many times. We've heard that verse many times. But is true wealth the same as worldly riches? Because the Bible has so much to say to us about this subject. So when you read this, I wish above all things, who is really saying that to us? God Almighty. That's not a preacher saying it or a prosperity movement saying it. It's God. And I pray this will really get right into your spirit that this is God's amazing will for you as a born-again Christian. Beloved, he's not talking to the world, he's talking to you and I. I wish above all things. That word wish is I pray that in all things, in all things, that you may prosper and be in health as your soul. So now it's important to know that God Almighty is highly interested and cares about us so deeply, so deeply, so highly interested in everything we do, and so cares about us so deeply that he wants the best for us. Don't you want the best for your children? I do. And here we see God Almighty, a father, speaking to his children. I want the best for you. I want you to prosper. I want you to live in health. I want you to have the best in this life. It's my supreme will for you. It's my supreme will for you. Because he says, I wish above all things. It's my supreme will for you as my children that have accepted my son as Savior. So this is something very important we must pay attention to, that God wants us to really grasp. It's his intent, it's his purpose for us that we really receive it. Now, what does the Bible say in Psalm 23, verse 1, which we all know? The Lord is my shepherd, and because he is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not have any lack. And then you read something that I think sometimes we miss in this amazing song, and we see the heart of the Father for us all, where it says in verse 2, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Wow, God leads me to abundance. It's his will for us as his children to be living with abundance. But I'm not talking here about money. So I want you all to pay attention to this. I am talking about true, true wealth. Yes, there's abundance in wealth. 
And it doesn't come from the world. It doesn't even come from our hard work. <clears throat> no. He maketh me lie down. Enjoy green pastures. He leadeth me beside still peaceful waters where there's contentment and no sorrow and trouble. There's no trouble there. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So now it says in verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me, that's abundance, in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with all my rub, my cup runs over. So wherever you look in the Bible, you see God Almighty always promising us abundance. No lack has ever been promised to us as God's children. Now we all know that all wealth, true wealth, comes from the Lord. Uh, in Haggai, for example, we all know the verse, I'm sure, but I think it's good to read it and see what the Bible says in chapter 2 and verse 8. And I really want the Holy Spirit to die. I pray the Lord will really get this through to your heart. The silver is mine, Haggai 2, 8. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. So, <clears throat> the love of money is the root of all evil. When people want to make money, well, they can make money without God blessing them. Ah, some of you are just now beginning to, to, to think the way I've been thinking lately. Because a lot of people that you know and I know have made a lot of money. But with that money comes what? Trouble and sorrow. Now, when you go to Luke 18, you see something quite puzzling, and yet amazing. Do you remember the young rich ruler that came to the Lord and said to the Lord, good master, um, what shall I do to inherit life eternal? And the Lord says, well, simply obey the commandments. He says, I've obeyed all of them. And then the Lord said, you lack one thing. Sell all you have, give it to the poor, and you'll have treasures in heaven. He was offering that man true wealth. He said, now stop loving money. Stop living for money. Stop living for riches. Look for true wealth that brings with it much more than riches. And then the Lord said, when that man left, very sorrowful. You see how sorrow is a part of worldly riches? Which is not real wealth, by the way. Because real wealth has no sorrow in it. And so it says, and when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, ah, this is the key. So the man was thinking, I need to give all my hard-earned money to the poor. He didn't get the message at all. What Jesus was offering him was way more than money. He was offering him true, true heavenly riches, treasures in heaven. But these treasures in heaven doesn't mean lack on earth either. And then the Lord made an amazing statement. He says, how hardly, verse 24, how hardly shall they that have riches, not wealth, that have riches, enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the, the, the eye of a needle than for a rich man, not a wealthy man, for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, Abraham is in heaven. What did Abraham have? Well, because rich people, sadly, uh, the Bible says very, very, very clearly, that they have a lot of sorrows that goes along with their life. Now, let's just look at something that I think is really, really important. All right. Um, I want to take you 
to 1 Timothy real quickly. Let's go to 1 Timothy and let's look at something that I think is very, very important. And let's look at chapter 6 and let's look at verse 10. The Bible says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while, which while some coveted after money, they have erred from the faith, they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So when people want to get money, and a lot of them do by just working hard, by honest means or dishonest means, people get money. The wicked get money through wicked means too. So having money doesn't mean that it came from the Lord. Now, wealth comes from the Lord because he said, I wish above all things that you prosper or have wealth. So true wealth, true prosperity is wealth from the Lord. In fact, the Bible tells us very, very clearly um, in, <clears throat> in 2 Chronicles 26, verse 5, about Uzziah, it says, as long as he sought the Lord, as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. So true prosperity is not worldly riches. So how do people become rich in a worldly way? Well, they become rich in 1 John 2, 16. It talks about the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. That's what is evil. That is what is worldly. That's what brings sorrow and harm. And there's no security in it whatsoever because people can lose it overnight. You can never lose wealth. You cannot lose when God is blessing you. So people can invest money in the world. They can make money in the world. But if God Almighty is not blessing them, then they will lose that money that they have worked so hard for so hard for, and they lose it all like that. Why? Because it's not true wealth. Then true wealth can never be lost. We can never ever lose what God gives us. We can lose what we get ourselves. And this is what I've been thinking about for the last few months. When God blesses you with true wealth, true prosperity, so when these people talk about the prosperity gospel, there's no such thing as a prosperity gospel. That's just an invention of somebody's mind. There is biblical, God-given wealth that comes upon individuals, and that is fully secure. There's no insecurity in it. It multiplies supernaturally. Yet money that people make in a worldly way, does not multiply supernaturally. There's no supernatural anything in it. There's no supernatural blessings anywhere near it. But what God gives us is multiplied supernaturally. In fact, the Bible says, let's, let's go to Proverbs. I, I pray this is really getting through to you, that real wealth that comes from the Lord can never be lost, even in a bad deal or a bad experience. So when people lose money, they have lost, they lose something they have worked for, not something God gave them. When God gives it to you, you can't lose it. Proverbs 13, 11 says, wealth or riches, the actual Hebrew says riches, Riches gotten by vanity shall be diminished, shall be lost if people get their money by vanity, by worldly means, or that word means dishonestly. They will lose that money. So what is the secret? The covenant. Walking in covenant 
with God Almighty. And when we walk in covenant, and we are living for the Lord, we are pleasing the Lord, we're obeying the Lord, then he will give us true wealth that will come without us working and worrying and feeling insecure. So it says, but thou shalt remember, Deuteronomy 8, 18, I think this will put a brand new light on this one too. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. So in, in what it says here is remember the Lord. Worship the Lord. Walk with the Lord. Because that word remember doesn't mean mental remember. That word remember means walk with him. Let him be your all in all. Be connected to him. Be his own people. Let him be your God in every way in your life. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, his promise, which he swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. So, when God gives us the power to get wealth, that means we have to decide, do I receive it? And what must I do to receive it? If God gives us wealth, do I work for it? Do I struggle to find it? Do I worry about where it is? No. God gives us wealth without us doing anything except one thing and one thing only. Planting. Sowing. See, people, listen, you've gotta, you really need to get this. This is really life-changing. People can make money by working hard. They can make money with gifts they have, talents they have, all that. But they can lose it in one day. Because they're not getting it God's way. God's way is God wants to give it to you as a child, as his own. To bless you. But what must we do? First of all, we have to receive it. We have to receive the fact that God wants to give us power to receive true heavenly wealth that we can't lose. So then I need to do something. I have to plant it. The power of abundance. Wealth comes by an act. Because, because without planting, there is no receiving. The act of planting, that is what God looks for. And the minute I plant, the minute I obey, now I give God, I give God the mean to begin to bless me. I give God access. So planting gives God access. Without planting, I, God has no access to me to give me that wealth he promised. So it is clear that giving, planting, is the key to receiving because without planting, God has no access to me in blessing me financially, in blessing me with real, heavenly, true wealth that I cannot lose. So planting is the key. In Psalm 112, and I've taught this many times on Psalm 112, but frankly, years ago, I never saw what I'm seeing now in this time in my life, because I've been in ministry now so long, that things are, have become much, much clearer as I've gotten older. Here's, here's a man in Psalm 112 that is really blessed by God. It says, blessed is that man who fears the Lord. Blessed is that man who delights in his commandments. He is so blessed, his children are mighty on earth. He's so blessed that his, his children are blessed. And the generations that follow him, this upright man, will be blessed. 
Wealth and riches are in his house that he will not lose them. But now, something, we see something so powerful in verse 9 that says this. He had dispersed. That man understood that planting in God's kingdom is the key to true wealth. So worldly riches by, uh, come by working hard, but we can lose that. But true wealth, true wealth comes from the Lord. And all we have to do is not work for it, plant in the kingdom. And Jesus gave us a great secret. The Lord gave us a great secret. When he said in Matthew, and we, and we have looked at that so many times, all of us believers have read that part so many times and have heard it preached so many times, but I think sometimes we miss one thing, where the Lord said in Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom. What was he saying? He was saying, plant in the kingdom. Let that be your, prior- your priority. Let it be your heart. The kingdom be your life. The kingdom be your life. Live in it. Obey God. And plant in it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Let God's priority be number one in your life, which is the gospel. The gospel. And his righteousness or Righteous cause, as some translations put it. And all these things, and all these things that you need to live uh, shall be added with no sorrow with it. With no insecurity with it. Think about that man in Luke. He was sorrowful because he's saying, oh, I'm going to lose my riches, but Jesus was really offering him wealth, wasn't he? Had that man only seen it, but he didn't see it. And I pray you see it. Some of you work so hard, so hard, and you worry about tomorrow, and you worry about what may come to you and your family. Living for Jesus takes care of everything. Loving the Lord takes care of everything. And when we seek the kingdom and plant in the kingdom, now I know a lot of you are doing that already. I'm so grateful to the Lord that you are my partners. But some maybe have never really heard it put this way, that there's a big difference between wealth and riches. That man in Luke did not want to lose his riches while Jesus was offering him real treasures and wealth that literally bring abundance in this life too, no lack whatsoever in this life. And all we have to do is one thing, plant seed in the kingdom of God because everyone who plants seed is saying to God, you're first in my life. The gospel is first in my life. My vote is for the gospel. Will you do that today? Will you really sow a seed today with joy, with a cheerful heart? I know you will. And when you give today, just begin to praise the Lord that he will send the rain on that seed you will plant. Because all we need to do is plant, he sends the rain, and he brings the harvest. And I know God is talking to a lot of you because when you really plant seed in the kingdom of God, you can't lose it. You can't lose it. And God will protect everything you do in this life because it says all these things will be added on to you. You There's no loss in the kingdom. So Lord, thank you for your word. And I pray you'll bless them now, Lord. Bless your people as they sow seed. Bless them greatly, Lord. And your word declares, if we sow sparingly, we reap sparingly. If we sow bountifully, we reap bountifully. Speak to your people now, Lord, to sow that seed 
bountifully. And they might reap bountifully and receive true wealth for the rest of their life. No lack whatsoever. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being with me. I pray the Lord will bless you and keep blessing you and prosper you and keep prospering. Okay, you can sow your seed right now by simply going to our website, benihim.org. So simple. Just go to our website. Those of you that know how to sow your seed on the platform you're watching me on, go ahead and do that. If you don't, just go to our website, benihim.org. You can text it, VHM45777, or by PayPal. A lot of you from different parts of the world, uh, you can give by PayPal. So simple to the ministry. And it's on the screen for you. Everything is right there for you on the screen. Make it simple. Thank you for joining me. And I pray the Lord will so reward you and so bless you. I'll see you Monday for an amazing week all next week. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Bye-bye. This is your personal invitation to come and celebrate with us this December. 48 years of ministry for the glory of our wonderful Lord Jesus. And I want you to come and celebrate the goodness of the Lord, December 3rd. It's also my birthday, I'll turn 70. And Christmas, all in one beautiful banquet, but especially to celebrate the goodness of the Lord Jesus in all of our lives. I'm so grateful to the Lord for what he has done in 48 years. So would you join me December 3rd in Dallas at the Ritz Carlton at 7 p.m. for a wonderful banquet. For more information, please go to our website and register. I want to see you there. I'm inviting you 